Believe it or not, this is the first rear wheel drive Volvo this side of the year 2000. It's quite incredible. So this is the Volvo XC40, which has been around for quite a few years because there's a few different fuel variants that you can get in the car, but it was always designed from the ground up that one day it would take a battery and motors. So here we have the single motor rear wheel drive XC40, which has come down in price because you don't have the dual motor setup. So let's have a little look around the car. We'll go for a spin. We have a frunk, very handy for charging cables, 19 inch alloy wheels, very practical car when it comes to the boot because you can fit lots into it. I love the fact that it has rubber mats and a rubber boot liner uh, just for keeping things clean. Uh, what's the efficiency like? Volvo are very, very optimistic in my opinion as to what they say first the range is and also the efficiency of the car. We'll get to that in a little while. And can you fit your family and all the stuff? We'll cover it in great detail here on Nobby on Cars. Welcome. Reversing this car is a doddle because if there's any rear cross traffic, it will warn you. You've got a 360 camera with every angle pretty much covered that you'd ever want. So if you're someone who doesn't really like parking in tight spaces and anything like that, well, you are going to love uh, this car. And safety is very important to Volvo. All their cars for the last years have been limited to, I think it's 112 miles an hour, which is more than anybody ever needs, to be fair. And this car also has blind spot, frontal collision avoidance, uh, automatic intervention with rear brake. There's, like, there is a list as long as your arm for what will keep you safe in this car. Something that is a little bit, I suppose, different to what Volvo claim, they say you will get 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And with a battery that's over 80 uh, kilowatt hours for usable, that should in theory mean that you will easily, easily get well over maybe 450. Now they're claiming 500 up to. So I'm achieving about 18 today. The longer 600 odd that's in the trip is at 21 and a half kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And it's cold enough today, but it has been unseasonably mild for the last little while when this car would have been used, including whoever was driving before me. And in that respect, then, I just think it's, it's a little bit difficult to achieve the figures that Volvo themselves are claiming. Now, from a practicality point of view, it's a great boot. Underneath the boot, as well as the front, they have extra storage down there. So it really is a very nice solution if you're going to be transporting your dog and a couple of bikes. Not at the same time, but you know, it's, it's quite usable. And I love that mat, that rubber uh, mat in the floor, because even the other day I had stuff going into a skip and the boot was kind of full of stuff and I was able to pull that mat out, empty it, all the dust and bits of wood into the actual skip and my boot looked brand new again. And it's always nice to have a brand new boot. Then for the rear occupants in the car, good space for two people. The third is gonna be a little bit crammed. Interesting, there is a rear tunnel for transmission, even though this was always planned to be an EV one day. Uh, there's two heated seating buttons that are really far down. Great space for your knees, your feet. I just think the back seat has been fairly well thought out. It is a little bit dark, but obviously you can track this uh, sunroof blind which opens by the way and then you'll get loads of space and light more importantly uh, inside the vehicle now i love the google platform for so many reasons one you type in your destination and just like your phone you get the red lines where it's busy it gives you alternative routes all that all that stuff is just there uh, what else is brilliant is it'll tell you if you're going to X destination how much charge you'll have when you get there and how much you'll have if you return to where you've just put in the destination. And that makes journey planning quite nice. And you'll know, do I need to stop for charge? Will I make it? I did it myself the other night. It said I was going to get home at 3%. Then it changed to 2 Got a little bit nervous. And then it went back to 3 And I got home at 3%, plugged the car in, and went to bed. You know, and that is... 
how electric car ownership is meant to be. You're not meant to be relying on the public charging network. And when you have that kind of level of detail as to how much range you truly have, you know, just focus on percentage. Think of your phone, you know, you can look at the mileage and one minute it says 290 kilometers, the next minute it'll say 250, and you turn the aircon off and it'll jump to 320. Just look at the percentage. That will give you a better idea. Uh, Volvo say they have better thermal efficiency with the battery cells, so that's why this kind of more recent version of this car has a little bit better range. Um, but as I say, that efficiency, not quite sure it's there. Uh, I'm not, I don't like when you have everything working here in terms of sat nav and you're flicking between different audio sources, you can't see what you're listening to. It doesn't display that anywhere. That's a little bit annoying. Storage is good, space for cups, extra little nooks and crannies. There's even an ashtray. Wireless charging, two USB-Cs. Uh, that's another thing. So if you want CarPlay, you have to connect the cable. It will do Bluetooth audio streaming, but that's not CarPlay. So you've got to plug that in, a little bit frustrating. You can time your charging, your destination, you can limit how much charge you want to put into the car. Maybe you're not going that far and you just want to go to 80%, then you can do that. Uh, 130 kilowatt is the highest charging speed on the single motor. The dual motor will do 200 kilowatt charging you're paying extra for the car though so you know this is at your 58,000 euro it's probably enough for most people 130 kilowatt I think that's okay you know it's still it's about 30 minutes for um, 20 to 80 percent and it's 27 minutes if you have the 200 so there's really not a huge amount in the difference 252 brake horsepower in this car the dual motors they're like well into 400s and it's kind of bonkers in the one sense because volvo are safe cars family cars and then you have this thing that can go so fast with two motors it just doesn't really make sense it still handles well you know it's a higher up suv seating position but handling is good i dare i say it, you can have a bit of fun with it actually you know and that straight line performance is always there and it's it's kind of when you're really taking a very very easy in city traffic is when you're going to see it at its most efficient that's the time i've gotten closest to what volvo say the car can do one other thing on the charging uh, my charger at home which will charge at just over seven kilowatts on most cars is topping out at 4.4 kilowatt on this now i've checked you can limit how much amp usage is going on check that it's not that I don't know, is there some weird quirk of the XC40 that will only charge at 4.4 kilowatt on the Type 2 cable? If you're aware of this, let me know. I certainly haven't been able to find any details uh, suggesting the same. Harman Kardon sound system in this car, it really does come very, very well specced. You know, so you could look at the price and go, yeah, that's a lot. And it is, it really is. But when you scrape under the surface, there's quite a bit of stuff that you get for that package and the safety list truly is extensive for what you can get two things that are brilliant in this car you can have an automatic one pedal you can turn it on so like one pedal driving you lift off and it will bring the car to a stop over you know a, a little period of time put some regen back into the car but really it just makes it a very relaxing thing to do in terms of stop start traffic the other thing is it has hill descent control and that means just if you're going down a hill the car is not going to freewheel and just run off and you're constantly braking trying to keep the same speed it will do a little bit of that heavy lifting for you so there's two little kind of things that work in the background that make this car an easier vehicle to live with all in all, I think it's a really solid family car. It's easy to drive, it's, it's quick, it's fun to drive, it's well put together. The interior is a little bit boring, you could say. It's a little bit black. I mean, these things light up at night and they look nice, but it, it's fairly black. Good quality black plastics, but still quite black. Uh, it could be more efficient. That could come down to the design of the car as well. It's maybe not the most aerodynamic car in the world, but I would expect better and when you see it creeping into the 20s you're like shouldn't shouldn't be doing that it really shouldn't so efficiency and price aside <laughs> and efficiency isn't always it's sometimes depending how you're driving it 
then it's certainly a very interesting car from a family point of view and it looks looks great it gets a lot of looks uh, this is vapor gray this color so that's the that's the one you're you want if you like this it's kind of like a flat metallic gray it's like that i think it's moonstone in volkswagen it's very like that color but there's just a lovely depth to it and uh, this car is certainly very very eye-catching on the road when you look at the shots of it outside and the exterior uh, particularly the right color it does stand out a lot anyway my summary on the volvo xc40 here it comes volvo has made a pretty great family car in the form of the xc40 it's not the most efficient car but if you want to go electric it's made that transition pretty easy fast charging speeds if you need them charge it at home albeit with that discrepancy that i've had it's probably just this car but if you know anything about that or you have one let me know what speed you're car charges at, at home on a type 2 charger and um, so if you were to remove the budget aspect of the car it's a solid performer it is in the space of the ID4 the Ionic 5 uh, BMW iX3 there's it's a crowded space but I think they've made it different enough that they will be interested in it it's still going to be a car that isn't 10 a penny in the roads that's kind of one of the nice things about Volvo if I'm being honest with you uh, if you want to hang on for a smaller, more affordable uh, EX30 model, then that will be on the channel very, very soon. We'll get a drive of it down in Barcelona in the not too distant future. So subscribe to the channel for that video, other Volvos and lots more cars. And uh, if you have any thoughts on this or other vehicles and comments and questions and ownership feedback, love it all. That's what the comment section is for. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.